A few weeks ago, I was sitting at my oak table in Auburn, Kansas, a few miles east of the Flint Hills, watching the Cardinals bicker over who gets to sit on the theater. And I was also thinking about the LA strategic plan and those of the divisions and the round tables and affiliate organizations. They're all thoughtful, well written, and include goals like providing greater value to members, increasing or rebuilding membership, establishing partnerships, promoting diversity, preserving our core values, professional development, advocacy, and organizational excellence. These plans are intended to transform our profession and our libraries for the 21st century. But we've been talking about these same goals since I became a librarian 35 years ago. These are goals I strongly support. But in the budget-constrained environment in which libraries are operating, we need to approach them in a more collaborative manner. We've not always been successful in coming together to tackle our biggest challenges. ALA should be the place that issues and people coalesce to identify challenges, have a process to reach consensus, and to move forward representing the profession's best interests. 21st century libraries need advocates, and great 21st century libraries also need great 21st century librarians. And like many professional associations, ALA has seen some decline in membership as are many of its divisions. Its future success is tied to its ability to provide value and relevance to our profession and its members. Our library users expect services, collections, and programs when, where, and how they want them. <laughs> Librarians must have a professional association that supports them in their efforts to deliver what our users and communities want and need. It must also model the way in the practice of leadership, the use of technology, and timely responsiveness to the challenging economic, legal, and political environment we live and work in. One of our biggest assets in ALA, the choices we offer members, lots of divisions, roundtables, committees, all those opportunities, is also one of our biggest challenges. The way we organize ourselves doesn't necessarily always lend itself to collaboration and pooling of resources to fix the big problems and attract members. The good news is, <laughs> I spent the last 10 years facilitating process improvement in libraries. I have used that experience to encourage staff and members to operate efficiently, effectively, and creatively, as our strategic plan says, to work together, to develop an organization-level approach to common needs and challenges. As ALA president, just as I have as the president of the Library Leadership and Management Association, the CEO of the Topeka and Shawnee County Public Library, and share a part of envisioning a community planning process in my community, I work to facilitate communication, participation, and organizational development to ensure that ALA is strategic, nimble, and innovative, with the right leadership and a focus on value to its members and our profession. ALA will be the champion a gathering place for 21st century libraries and librarians and the many other individuals and professions that help make our libraries successful. I would love the opportunity to help make that happen. I believe that all of us are smarter than some of us. Remember that stack of strategic plans I was contemplating on my old oak table? Each unit has to have a sense of identity and a work plan to move forward and serve its members, but ultimately, we need to come together in a different way to get bigger, better results. Let's work together and do that. Thank you. Libraries are on the cusp of greatness. We're facing serious challenges, indeed, and yet we are in reinventing our libraries to become virtual and business centers of innovation, conversation, personal growth, and knowledge building. ALA must spearhead this transformation of libraries and, in turn, transformation of our communities. My strong background in librarianship and in experience in ALA will make me uniquely positioned to lead ALA at this time of transformation. Throughout my library career, I have used a collaborative leadership model to build teams and create change. I've been a library administrator in Tennessee, Arkansas, and New York City. I've been a frontline school librarian for over 20 years, a division president, 
uh, an executive board member, an AOA counselor, a member of a number of committees in AOA. And through that, I have learned AOA and learned all types of libraries so that we can pool our resources, work together, and make a huge impact. I have a very thoughtful and can-do attitude. I believe that we can make change by working together. As AOA president, I will focus in four areas. First, I will build a strong collective AOA voice. I will do that by making AOA more inclusive. I see that we are pulling apart some we're still silenized no matter how hard we try. We can build mechanisms within ALA to create a synergy of voices and result in a strong collective voice that actually builds public will for our learners. I will frame our initiatives around intellectual freedom, diversity, equity of access, and lifelong learning. I am particularly concerned about our underserved rural and urban areas. I will bring passion, commitment, and experience in public speaking to bring our public AOA voice to the larger public and commit our communities to a will for strong libraries. The second priority for my presidency is to strengthen the library profession. And this is where AOA is strong, but we need to work even more intensely at developing new ways of delivery of professional development, both online, virtual, virtual access to conferences, and face-to-face. -face. I am committed to work through ALA APA for higher library salaries and continuing promoting the certification programs. I'm committed to increase the diversity of ALA, and I'm talking about ethnic, age, type of library, and geographical diversity. ALA has to be a home for sharing our best thinking, whether it's digitization and preservation of our cultural records, information literacy for college students, providing family literacy through public libraries, or preparing our students to succeed in college and career. My third priority is to support library transformation efforts across the country. I will support this transformation efforts by leading AOA to negotiate for increased public funding for libraries, library-friendly publishing and availability of electronic books, a national strategy for school libraries, and a strong legislative agenda. Finally, I will focus on transforming communities through libraries. I will promote AOS efforts to help our librarians align their services with the priorities of their communities. We need training. We can empower ourselves to do this. And I find that when we empower our communities, they will speak out for libraries. Now is our time. Under my leadership, we will seize the moment. Together, we have the knowledge, will, and dedication to transform ALA, transform our libraries, and transform our communities. Thank you. My name is Louise Ratliff, and I'm at the University of California, Los Angeles. I was appalled the other day listening to NPR talking about the Wikipedia blackout. And after their reporting, mentioning that they had partnered up with some other media outlet, and that if people wished answers to questions that they could not find on Wikipedia, they send them to them, and they will work together to find the answers. I heard other small reports during the day, and nowhere did I hear mention of the word library. What do you think ALA can do to enhance our presence among the mass media? There's two answers to that. First of all, we can continue to do what we are already doing. Actually, ALA has had 
I think, a pretty aggressive approach, especially since the recession, in promoting library and the notion of libraries. I know I, should, I was annoyed when um, it, all of a sudden it was the huge news story in the Wall Street Journal that libraries have to find jobs. Hello. We've been doing that for 30 years. Um, but we have to own that too. The Professional Association with Leadership can deal with this at the national level through the ALA Washington office legislatively um, and through the influence that you have as the leader of the Professional Association for Libraries in the United States. Certainly you can do that. But it also has to happen at the local level. We have to demonstrate our value and make sure that, that at the grassroots level, our communities understand our value. Why aren't we on the list of the top you know, tier that people go to for the best information? Who is it? It's family and friends. How do we get in that list? We have to have real relationships with our library users at the local level, and it starts there. I find that the best way to have an impact is to take a proactive stance. So when an issue comes up that we know affects libraries, but the media may not know, we need to proactively provide the stories, provide the input to the media so that as they're coming forth with their things, they already have our information. Now, they may not always use it, but we can provide solid examples, we can provide justifications, we can provide the value, but we need to do it, we need to not do it in a reactive way and go, oh, we weren't mentioned by NPR. When a story comes up, we need to hit it and make sure that our point of view is heard from the beginning. Good morning. My name is Janice Greenberg. My question is for both of you. In New Jersey, as well as across the country, the public libraries, including my own, school libraries, academic libraries, special libraries, are all going through tremendous challenges and budget cuts. Our leaders, the directors of the library, a lot of them are isolated, do not reach out to ALA. The support staff and professionals a lot of times do not think of joining ALA. What will ALA and the U.S. President do to give them a sense of, yes, we can help you, and maybe you can afford to come down, we will have resources, and we welcome you to join eventually, and we are there for you. That is exactly what I think needs to be one of our focuses, is the idea of inclusiveness, so that our members not only feel that we are reaching out to them, but they feel that they can have an impact on the association by telling us the priorities and what's happening and that their voices matter. I think we need to use technology for that, but we also need to provide opportunities for people to have conversations at the local level. Every one of us is facing budget cuts, and that's the worst time in the world to feel isolated. But we're not in it in separate groups. School librarians feel very marginalized in a lot of communities, but but we need to build partnerships at the local level with public libraries and academic libraries. And when we stand for each other, that's a much stronger voice. And we don't feel as isolated or as marginalized. Um, and I think ALA can foster that type of conversation at the local level so that all of us can speak strongly whenever any type of library is threatened. In addition to those excellent suggestions, I think, I think that there, we have an opportunity here. Virtually every state has a state chapter, has a library association. Um, a lot of, of the library community that perhaps may not choose to join ALA may join their state chapter. We have chapter counselors um, that represent their, their individual councils. Um, and they report back. But I think that we can do a lot more in terms of more communication flow beyond that one individual to the states back and forth. Um, and I also think that there's an opportunity to forge even stronger relationships with state libraries and state librarians, again, because they're working at that grassroots level and have an intimate working knowledge of what the challenges are on the ground. I would also suggest that in addition to that, there are other libraries, there are other associations, professional associations, that serve the interest of libraries and librarians, any number of them. 
One is the Urban Libraries Council, which you mentioned public libraries. And I think they are also operating at that grassroots level. And I think there's a real opportunity there, again, to work together and present that united front. Because when the message is being heard from a variety of sources, it becomes stronger. Good morning. My name is Jody Howard, and I am an associate professor and interim director of the Palmer School of Library and Information Science um, on, in, at Long Island University. I'm going to go with the word at the end, excuse me. Um, my question kind of piggybacks on the one that was just asked. As a professor of school librarian specifically, it is disconcerting to see and to hear what is happening all over the United States with school librarians being replaced by paraprofessionals. If this question is for both of you. As leaders and president of ALA, what will you do to help us in that situation? Thank you. I've worked my entire career in public libraries, but it's been in partnership with school libraries. As a matter of fact, uh, early in my career, I was a school librarian liaison. Um, so, uh, in my current role as CEO of the Topeka Shawnee County Public Library, I meet on a regular basis with school superintendents, school librarians, and uh, other members of the library and staff. ALA can help with this by promoting the knowledge and advocating at the national level. And, but where I think ALA is going to be most helpful is in, in, in giving its members the strength at the local level, because so much of this happens at the local level. And quite honestly, I'm thinking about a new model now. Boards, governing boards, public library boards, and school boards need to be meeting together as well to have these conversations. Because it's no longer enough to have the superintendent and the, the CEO of the local library having those discussions, or the school librarian and the public librarian that are on the front lines. Those, those actually have been occurring, certainly in my community and communities across the country. But until we involve governance, I don't think we're going to see any real movement there. And I'm certainly prepared to facilitate that. I think we need to take a very hard hitting approach to this. It's not, uh, oh, please, hire librarians. We have to show the value added. We have to, through ALA, collect the research and the hard data about the value of school libraries and the teaching of school librarians. <coughs> Excuse me in terms of the impact on student learning. We also need to form coalitions with the public libraries and the academic libraries and foster that through ALA because what we're really trying to build through school libraries is lifelong learning. We need to connect students when they're in school to libraries for life and then we turn it around and all the community will see that without that learning information literacy skills in school libraries, we're turning out graduates who are victims of the information world and not people who can be successful in the information world. One final comment is that advocacy is really based on meeting the priorities, so we need to speak to administrators, to uh, teachers associations, and so that the value that they see is obvious of what they can get from their libraries. Hello, my name is Elena Rosenfeld from the High Plains Library District in Colorado. We've been having increasingly concerned conversations that there's no national forum for purchasing on large scale or grants. And we're talking about on a local level, we can get some local grants on the state level, we can, but if we could do stuff on a national level, we can go after the hard of those huge organizations. Similarly, for purchasing, changes, changing our assumptions on how e materials are made available. That national national scope of purchasing, bulk purchasing, might allow new conversations on how we direct what happens next. Master Sorry, that both of you would be willing to share your thoughts on this concept, which is very rough. Of course, you brought up an issue that is so huge that it needs to be high on our agenda. The whole ebook publishing and availability is something that ALA needs to take a very strong leadership role in. Um, if there aren't the answers. 
and, um, and we can facilitate a national agenda on this and facilitate a lot of work with publishers on the national level that you can't do in individual libraries as you're working through it. That's the kind of leadership that I think we need to show. Um, and so that purchasing is made available because we've worked through some of these thorny issues on the national level. Can I ask for some clarification from the, the person with the question? When you talk about bulk purchasing, were you specifically referring to e-content or, or all types of resources? E-content is what really brought up the conversation. However, to look at seems silly because there's still a variety of content out there. Thank you. Um, one of the things that, one of the phenomena that we've seen in recent years um, that is not directly related, certainly, to AIG within ALA, but certainly they're, they're, we, are in, we are interested in that, is, is the development of, say, some of the Uber networks, like Lyricis. Um, I think the goal there, and I think we have to look really closely at that model, um, because I think part of the mission there is to help to begin to aggregate the buying power of libraries. Um, and a much larger scale than we've ever been before. Um, I think that we have to take a closer look at that and see if that really works. There are some of us that have actually been working. Um, I, in the interest of full disclosure, I serve on the board of a nonprofit called Library Renewal. Um, and the, the whole intent and mission of Library Renewal is to look at exactly this situation in terms of leveling the playing field, not just for public libraries, but for all libraries, certainly in the purchase of e content. The other thing I would say about this is, is we have allowed forever, and I'll just speak for myself as a public librarian, our vendors like Baker and Taylor and Ingram to do the heavy lifting for us. We didn't have to know much about the publishing industry because that was all taken care of for us. Publishers don't know a lot about us either. That needs to change because the reality is, is if we don't come to an understanding and we don't have the credentials to sit at the table, Amazon and Apple and Google are going to take care of it for us. I'm Kim Lear, I'm from the College of Western Idaho. Um, I would like to hear from the candidates about their vision for how ALA can continue to attract brilliant and energetic uh, people to our field and, and get them involved in the association and move them forward to leadership roles. I know, um, and as, uh, as LAMA president, actually, we took a good hard look at what members really wanted. I know a number of the divisions and other units of ALA have done the same thing in terms of serving. The first thing is to understand what is it that they want and need from a professional association. The days, I'm a boomer, and so, you know, the, basically the ethic for me was I joined the professional association because it was the right thing to do. And I didn't really think too much about what I was going to get out of it, and of course, I've as, for as much as I've given, I've gotten back tenfold. And that's what you find out once you engage with the organization. But people that are new to the profession are looking for some very specific things now. They're looking for mentors. They're looking for the opportunity to practice skills that they don't have the opportunity to in their current positions. They're looking to develop their toolkit and their skill set to make themselves more competitive for that next position that next great position as they move upward in their career. Um, and they're looking to develop their professional network with colleagues. So we have to be sure that the, the association, in terms of how we structure our programs and our activities and our initiatives, is geared towards making that happen. If we're doing what people need and want us to do, then they're going to be willing to, to write their name on the check um, to, to join the association. The bottom line is value to members. And we have to continue to demonstrate that. And it, that's very, and I will mention that in the strategic plan, that is a primary focus. I believe we need to start by attracting new members, and that needs to be conducted at the local and state level. We need to reach down into communities. Excuse me. I found that, a, that in New York City, it was really important to reach into who is there right now and interested in libraries, who was already working there but not certified. We have a lot of people who have exhibited interest uh, through volunteering, through whatever, and those are the people we need to tap them and lift them up to get their degree to become involved. 
The second thing that we need to do is we need to enable them to have an impact on the association. It's not enough for people just to join. They need to know that their voice matters, and that they can make a difference. And we can do that through um, virtual participation, through um, localized participation, as well as through other opportunities at ALA that don't involve maybe a big committee assignment, but ways for people to get involved around their interests. I'm Pat Wan, and I'm a member of BAR and a member of ALA Council. I have a personal commitment to developing libraries around the world. And I would like to know if, we, if each of you, uh, when you win your election, uh, has, as part of your agenda, uh, looking at and promoting ALA's role in international librarianship. And if you have that now as part of your agenda, how would you carry it out? We are an increasingly global society. We absolutely must reach out and form connections across the world. We have a lot to learn from each other and a lot to build on. I think we will all be stronger when we form those collaborations. I was interested in the COA report that um, they're talking about uh, accreditation going across national boundaries. That is certainly something that I would foster, that investigation, that conversation. I think a huge piece of what needs to happen is communication. And we need to reach out with substantive, interactive communication. It's not just ALA putting out information about ALA, but it's inviting that international conversation so that people understand what's happening in libraries in other parts of the country. I was absolutely surprised when I had made trips uh, to different countries to make presentations at the um, lack of school libraries. I actually didn't realize that there, weren't, there are school libraries all over the world. Well, of course there are. But we can learn from each other, and they were so happy to have someone come who understood this and who could show the impact of this type of library. And it just enthusiastically welcomed that reaching out to through um, <laughs> professional presentations. So I will continue to do that. I earned my international street cred. Um, and actually, my, my mentor and role model is Nancy Bolt, a uh, former state librarian of Colorado, who initiated the ABLE program, the American Bulgarian Library Exchange. So uh, in, in both my two most recent positions uh, at the uh, Ames Public Library in Iowa, as well as the Topeka Shelby County Public Library, we have been partners with the Varna Library of, of, of Bulgaria. I will tell you this, and I think that's actually where it starts in terms of the international agenda. Part of the mission of ALA has always been to help librarians understand and expand their understanding of of the world uh, that, that libraries operate in. I think more and more we're seeing more international visitors to ALA, to our conference, um, and we're using uh, libraries from around the world as models, whether that's in Hong Kong or Australia. Um, I think the other thing that we need to recognize is we have a cohort of members in our association that are already traveling and presenting internationally. I'm looking at my reporter right there. Uh, I, someone on my own staff, David King, has also presented both in Australia and has shared with colleagues in the Netherlands. And we need to leverage the relationships that they have already established in their building to expand that. Because if you look at the college, the, the four-year college experience now, my nieces will have um, an experience in another country. It is expected. And I think we need to start building the same expectations for ourselves as library professionals. Looks like you're the second California Library Cooperative. My question is for both candidates. One of the things that concerns me is that sometimes there doesn't seem to be a connection or a thread going from one presidential uh, from one presidential theme to the next presidential theme. How do you see your proposed theme if you are a successful candidate? Tying in, dovetailing with what has been done in the past. 
You've got three years to make a difference, right? Your vice president, then your president, then your past president. And we have some really strong initiatives going forward already. I'll have to tell you, I'm not interested in starting anything. We've got some very fine ones right now. If basically, the, the last several presidents have been building, starting with Roberta and Molly and Marty, um, are all using the strategic plan as the blueprint. I think we have to, to have consistency there and to really move forward, we have to continue to use it as a blueprint. It's a good plan. It's not that we won't tweak it, but we absolutely have to, to use that. Um, everything in there is very sound. Those are initiatives that are going to take years. And the type of culture change that actually, quite frankly, both Barbara and I are talking about doesn't happen in three years. It might happen in 10. So we all have to be there for the long haul. It has already started, actually, this thread, because I think leaders have recognized that that's extremely important. One of the reasons that I picked Transforming Libraries is it's a huge part of the ALA strategic plan. And I do believe that the strategic plan is a way to draw that thread through. That was created by the members, the broad section of members across our association. That would be the guiding light. We've already started the Transforming Libraries work. There is an advocacy campaign with Molly Raphael about empowering community voices, which is, I would continue that. Maureen is doing a very strong emphasis on leadership, which is also an integral part of transforming ALA. So my thinking is that we are already on that path, we recognize how important it is, and we can build and pull the, the strengths that are started to continue in the next years. I do not believe in a new president coming in and throwing out a strategic plan or heading off in a totally different direction. You are absolutely right to continue with the red. Tom Wiley at the University of Arizona in the LIS program. Um, uh, one of the things I see is new people coming into the profession who have decided to come into the profession. And a significant percentage of them have very traditional views of what their, their roles in libraries will be. And you want to shake them out of that and, and have them see the potential for new roles in these transformed libraries that you both talked about. How do we find the people who would be excited by that if they knew that libraries were being transformed? Do you have ideas about how we recruit real 21st century librarians who have 21st century um, images of, of libraries? I think to actually recruit people, we need to be specific. It's nice to say, oh, we have 21st century libraries, but what I discovered is that until you get down to specifics, what does it mean? What does digital literacy mean? What does it mean when you're empowering people to take hold of information and, and become who they want to be? So I think that supporting the efforts of all the divisions and the different parts of ALA about specifically what are you doing to, to envision this role. I was interested that um, we can have an AMA uh, strategic plans built on the ideas of, of the AMA strategic plans. So the idea of transforming library collections is in a strategic plan. That's beautiful because that's going to appeal to someone in a very specific way of how they can get involved according to what their own interest is. Um, the next piece and the last piece I would mention is the importance of reaching out to young, young professionals, young people in our community, and using the tools that they are comfortable with as a professional tool and as a way of operating in a library. We don't have to just be the way we are. 
we can transform and use the strengths of some of these new members so that they then feel empowered to make a difference. I think there's two strategies. First is, I think we have to start young, but even younger. Here's an example. My grandson is six years old. He said to me during the holidays, I'm going to be a basketball player, a race car driver, and an artist all at the same time. And I can do that. But in the gym library, we need to start talking in about what we do and, and share the passion for what we do. If we start talking to kids in high school, it's too late. We, that discussion needs to start a lot sooner. So I would suggest that, that we need to start promoting ourselves and talking about what we do with great pride and sharing that in a very, a very personal level. Um, secondly, we need to recruit, let's talk. We need to recruit for what we want. You know, I would suggest to you as library educators, and I harangue my library school colleagues about this a lot, you've got two tiers of customers, as it were. You've certainly got your students, that's your first responsibility, but you know what, you've got me as a library CEO out there saying to you, this is what I want to need from a 21st century librarian. And we have to have that continuous feedback loop. So if you're sending me folks that are innovative, they're not risk takers, they're not prepared to, to liaison with their communities, I can't use them. So I think that we need to set that expectation up front as, as if you're going to library school and you're going to have this as a profession, that's the expectation. John Barry, still at library now. Uh, I was interested in your answer to the question about presidential initiatives. And it occurred to me that you both said about the same thing. And I wonder if it makes any difference, and if you could tell me what difference it makes, whether we, which, which of you we elect. Does it make a difference? Yes. You've got two good choices here. The reality is, the thing is, this speaks to the strength of ALA. ALA goes on regardless of who's leading, right? It's how it goes on. I would offer to you that, um, and, and I will just speak to my own experience. I've spent most of my career asking the right questions, facilitating discussion, and then doing it. And I think sometimes that's where, especially in a large-scale organization like ALA, it's hard to get traction to it. And so we've got some great initiatives. We don't need new ones, I would suggest. We need to be prepared to respond to opportunities and threats, but I think we can do that within the framework of what we've got. The question is, who's going to facilitate that and actually make things happen? That's the difference. John, I would know you would ask a question like that. Um, what I would say is that um, I bring some real strengths, and I think you can count on those strengths. I have a collaborative leadership style that empowers others and connects others so that an agenda is moved forward. I have very strong experience in complex systems and navigating political environments, and we are in a political life that we need to take charge of and we need to have a leader for. I have a strong understanding of all the pieces of ALA, of different types of libraries. I've lived in a number of places across the country, a number of different sizes of systems, and I bring that understanding so that I can really listen to the different perspectives. I also have an abiding interest in transforming myself so that I'm a learner. And that is a strength that I bring to ALA. I continually bump up my own expectations for myself as a learner, uh, given that I've just moved to a totally new job that I'm trying to figure out what I can do. Um, but that's a strength. That's a strength as a leader, that we're willing to be flexible and learners and listen to all these different priorities and bring that together through a collaborative leadership style that moves ALA forward. Peggy Sullivan, library consultant from Chicago. And of course, me, I should have asked this question before John Mary's question, but it is, does either one of you have a sense of humor? And if so, what evidence is there of it? <laughs> Actually, yes, I do have a sense of humor. Um, and what I find is the best sense of humor is one where I don't take myself too seriously. Um, so uh, we have 
that I have one hat on one team in New York City. And we have these special jokes that we developed and uh, just a, a wonderful way of dealing with each other. I actually find that you get a lot further with a nurturing, with a, an environment of humor. And at, for a circuit board meetings, for example, um, you need that interjection. You can't just be too serious because life is made up of, of joy as well as hard work. A guy walks into a bar. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm sorry if you can tell. Uh, but I think that I, I would suggest to you this. I, I have, um, yeah, I do have some viewers where sometimes it's completely inappropriate and irreverent. So I have to kind of try to keep a lid on things. If you want to know better, rather than me telling you that our humor is funny, I suggest you talk to some of the people that know me best. Rob Banks, Michael Porter, and some of my colleagues. They'll let you know. Okay. If you want to know the real Barbara Strickland, you must know what's in my heart. I'm a librarian because of the people I serve. I think about changing kids' lives. And the young girl who came into the library and found a new library book, and it was her first visit to the library, she clutched it to her chest and she said, for me? I think about the irrepressible first grader who came charging into the library after he discovered that he could actually learn things through the library. He slammed open the door and he said, here are your searchers. I remember the young man who tracked me down in New York City years after he had graduated from Bayonne High School to tell me that the article I had found for him on hang gliding had propelled him into a career as an aeronautical engineer. Mahatma Gandhi said, you must be the change you want to see in the world. I bring to you what I hope to see in LA. My commitment to empowering communities by transforming libraries and ALA. My passion for core values of intellectual freedom, equitable access, diversity, and lifelong learning. My ability is to translate vision into effective actions that have a sustained effect. My strong experience in working with all types of libraries. My deep knowledge of ALA itself. My strength in negotiating solutions, my collaborative leadership skills. I pledge that I will work with you to assert and enhance librarian leadership in this rapidly changing world. Together, we can transform ALA, our libraries, and our communities. I ask for your vote. Thank you. I love what I do. After 35 years, I still love it. I look forward to going to work every day and I learn something new every day. And I love all of my colleagues. There's never been a better time to be a librarian. I firmly believe that. And you know what? We can talk about challenging times. Yeah, funding's a problem. Yeah, we have intellectual freedom challenges. You know what? When haven't we? I cannot think of a time in my career when I was not justifying my library's existence wherever I was. That's the way it is. But you know what? We, are, we have never been better prepared to deal with that. And a lot of that has to do with ALA and our professional associations. And I believe in that very passionately. I would appreciate your vote, uh, and I would appreciate the chance to serve as ALA, ALA APA president. Thank you.